How's it going guys? Ed Ricker here and we are already in Premiere. I wanted to put together just a little tutorial to show you how I edited my last video of the Mavic Pro in California with a 2.39 aspect ratio for more of a cinematic quality. We're going to start with uh, the sequence here. I'm going to right click on the sequence that I'm in and sequence settings. Now I think that the magic of this particular video is the fact that it's in 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio which is very cinematic looking, very very widescreen. And so the frame size of this particular sequence is 4096 by 1714. I shot all the video in 4096 by 2160. Now to start modifying these values for frame size you have to go into custom because if I was in anything else these would be shaded out. So that's our sequence. Now I have two sequences here. The first one is where I actually isolated all the clips from my footage list and just kind of plopped them in. See, they're not really organized and there's some actual space in between them. Um, and then what I did is I, uh, once I got all my footage there, I duplicated that sequence to this one. And then this is where I did all my fine tuning to get all the footage down to size to fit the length of the song. You also see that there are some uh, cuts here in the uh, track itself and that's because the track was way too long I just didn't have that much footage and I didn't want it to go over three minutes so I ended up using a constant power transition um, to basically cut beat one of a couple different measures uh, to get rid of some of the extra length of the song so if I were to get rid of uh, this side of it and drag it out you see the, that the song is actually a lot longer um, but I ended up cutting out this measure and this measure and that is how it looked. And then that constant power audio transition really makes it sound like nothing happened at all. That one sounds good and this one too. Um, and also I lucked out because the track itself has a lot of water sounds in it and since we're shooting near water quite a bit, it fit really well. So first off, the interesting thing about the way that the Mavic shoots footage is the Mavic at 3840 by 2160 which is Ultra HD or you could say 4K but it's not technically 4K um, is the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. If you are talking about the 4096 by 2160, which is true, 4K, what they call DCI, which is the Digital Cinema Initiative, um, that is more of a 256 by 135 ratio. Now if you go 16 divided by 9, you get into 177778. So the aspect ratio of um, 16 by 9 footage, if you want to get down to the lowest uh, denominator there, is 1.78 to 1. So 16 by 9 footage, which is the Ultra HD, or you could talk about 1920 by 1080, or 3840 by 2160, is 1.78 to 1. That's the ratio. That's if you divide, um, you know, 1920 by 1080. That's 1 1.77 or 78. But if we take 4096 divided by 2160, you uh, find 1.89 or 1.9 to 1. Now what we're talking about with um, 2.39 to 1 is this much wider image here and if you actually play it on a normal screen, I'll pause it, you get these uh, black bars on the top and the bottom and that's what we call letterbox format where we have this um, blackness on the top and the bottom. And so right here uh, at the very top left corner and then the bottom right corner of our footage is what we call 2.39 to 1. That's the ratio. So in Premiere right now we have a timeline that is 4096 divided by 1714 which is our 2.39 roughly uh, footage timeline there. And that's how we're going to get that cinematic look that you see sometimes in movies. Also there's a 2.35 which some people also use uh, but I like the more extreme example of the 2.39. Now how you would find that out uh, for yourself if you wanted to have a different type of footage is you would take how wide the footage is. So we're talking 4096 uh, divided by 2.39 and we have 1714 essentially rounding up pixels. And that's how you'd find how tall your sequence needs to be in order to get this specific cinematic aspect ratio.
Now the beauty of having an aspect ratio like this and shooting footage that is uh, shot normally at 16 by 9 or in this case uh, a little bit wider because it's uh, 4096 by 2160 is you can affect the y-axis of it and uh, kind of change your composition a little bit. You are throwing away a little bit of the image because you're cropping on the top and the bottom essentially but that also enables you to kind of get the exact um, composition um, vertically anyway that you like. You can also see a little bit of a rotation. Um, it's rotated a little bit to the left. See how this line is not straight? That's because the Mavic was kind of struggling in the wind and I had a little bit of a tilted horizon. So I did end up um, zooming in with the, the scale, which you can go to effects here and you can affect scale. It's, so it's 102% and the rotation is minus 0.5 or negative 0.5. So, uh, you can see that I fixed the horizon a little bit by um, affecting the rotation and then in order to affect the rotation without seeing some blackness on the side I scaled in at 102. So if I go to 100 then you look at my minus 5 or minus 0.5 rotation at full screen there's a little sliver of black here um, whether or not you'd notice that when you're watching the video uh, who knows but anyway so 102 on the scale allows us to then affect the rotation a little bit uh, without seeing any edge of the, the image itself. Now some of these clips like this one and this one I did not affect the Y axis of it so that's pretty much how it was um, plopped in there and if I were to double click you see that the edges of the footage are pretty even on the top and the bottom so I, I liked it the way it was I didn't, I didn't change it um, but you see that there is just a lot of sky and a lot of not important stuff down there. So that's why I thought that uh, it would look good in the center. This one as well looks good, you know, and you can't really tell that there is a tilted horizon if there is one because it's so hilly. Um, let's see, this one, we're actually at the very edge of the top of the um, footage. We have a lot of space down here and that's because when I plopped it into this uh, affected timeline here, this uh, cinematic uh, aspect ratio, that's what it looked like. And I thought, well, I don't want to see quite so much of that. I do want to see a little of the city in the background. So that's why I had it up like this. Um, and so stuff like this, I think I also did affect a little bit. So here I'm at the bottom because, you know, Harrison, my friend, I didn't want to like chop his legs off. I thought that looked a little awkward. So if we're showing walking, you know, I want to at least show a little more of the path. And he's walking along. So that's a better, a better uh, composition for me. Now most of these videos I didn't actually really affect that much in terms of colorization and if I did change the image at all in terms of how it looks um, it was going to be maybe some highlights and some shadows or maybe a little bit of exposure or contrast. I didn't change any of the colorization because I had my white balance at the time set to sunny and I had the Mavic Pro color profile of Agate G in the color profile list in the app. And so between those two things, um, yeah, I really just kind of uh, recorded it as it saw it and I was happy with what I saw. I also had a minus two on the sharpness value of the DJI Go app. However, contrast and saturation were both just at a normal zero. For these shots where it was getting to be later on in the day, I did bump up the highlights and I bumped down the shadows just a little bit of some of these just to make it pop up a little more. Uh, let me turn off the Lumetri color here to toggle the effect off and you see that that's, that's how it looked when I first recorded it. It's a little bit, I guess a little bit softer so I wanted a little bit um, darker shadows and brighter highlights and uh, kind of brings out the image a little more. Um, toward the end I start going into a little more extreme examples of that like this where if I go into basic correction, I brought the shadows up quite a bit because um, it was just getting too dark and our faces were kind of getting a little dark as well. So bringing that up really helped. Um, also an image like this, uh, I, I actually brought it up even more. Uh, and then this last one right here is uh, I also affected. So pretty much everything I just kind of brightened up a little bit. Now when it was earlier on in the day, uh, something like this footage right here. 
I actually brighten it up too, just a little bit. So here's another example, just very, very minor uh, changes. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like to really change the footage a lot on these things. I'd, I'd rather kind of see it as it came out of the camera and then just affect exposure. There we go again. So just adding a little bit of brightness. We're losing a little bit of detail in the highlights because we're bringing up the contrast a little more, but uh, it's, it's not a big deal for me. And there might only be one or two examples where I actually brought the image down, where I may have shot too bright. So in this case, we're at the beach, it was a little bit too bright. So I ended up actually darkening the footage just a little bit to get a little bit more rich water, a little more rich sky. Having it back the way I shot you know, on that day it just looks a little more washed out. Twice throughout this video, I, I use a transition. And the first transition happens here when the graveyard transitions into uh, the trees here. And that transition happens to be by uh, Ace Evolution. I'm not even sure if that's how you say it. But this is actually a free transition designer uh, wipe program. And you can upgrade to a, a paid version, but I'm using the free version right now. Uh, you go to Open Presets, and these are all the free presets that you can use for this transition designer. And they're pretty interesting. They, they apply glow and blur as well as um, the different wipes and stuff. So um, brings about a pretty cool effect. And the second time I use it is toward the end here, go from the waterfall here to up there uh, when the people are walking on the cliff. So that's a very quick transition uh, using the same transition designer, the free version. And in order to speed up that footage from this point to that point is actually just 500% uh, on the speed duration tool here. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. As always, all this stuff, all the Mavic info and accessories I talk about is in edricker.com. It's where all my Amazon affiliate links are. I also just signed up as an affiliate with Freewell Gear. So um, if you go through my links in the video description, you can find all sorts of DJI Mavic accessories as well as Hero 5 Black accessories and more. All right, thanks so much for watching and subscribe if you liked the video. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.